Hello and welcome, junkies, to episode number seven of the Six Flags Great America Junkies podcast. I am your host, Bob Bendorf, and today I am joined by Sarah and Jamie, and we're here to talk everything Hurricane Harbor. If you're not aware, if you're living under a rock, um, you haven't been on our Facebook page, Hurricane Harbor did open yesterday to season pass holders and to members, and I'm going to say this right now. It's only the water park that is open. I think from yesterday to today, I've seen it probably about 10 to 15 times asking, are the roller coasters up and running? Sorry, not yet. Just strictly the uh, water park. So, Sarah, Jamie, what were your first impressions of the new Hurricane Harbor? Um, I think it was so nicely thought out how they, um, you know, had conceptualized this new social distancing requirement. So even having those chairs zip tied in groups of two, three or four um, and very carefully arranged and staggered was really thoughtful. I thought it was just like, I'm going to say magical to be back walking through the dry park to get to the other park. It was just unbelievable. That feeling that you get inside. Yeah. I think, I think even everyone at the front gate, they were so darn excited that they allowed me and a couple other individuals ahead of me to kind of enter the dry park without rescanning our passes or memberships. (laughs) It was great. I was, you know, one of probably the first people stepping foot in the park. And that's how I got that video footage where there's really nobody around. It's because everybody behind us were uh, kind of Stop. stopped. I mean, I was fine. I was able to get the refills. I only ran into a little problem when it came to ordering lunch because it wasn't showing I was scanned in the park. But luckily, I found one of the people in management who happened to be right by the uh, restaurant in he definitely hooked me up, and uh, I didn't have to go all the way back to the front of the park to uh, to get scanned in. I always thought it was strange. Like, so if they're piping music or fan crowd into the stadium for baseball games, I was like, you need to pipe the the sound of the roller coasters as we're walking through here. And at first, they didn't have the music playing. So I was like, I need the music as I walk all this way. Oh yeah, that, uh, that, that was that was that was a little a little weird to kind of be uh, in there without having any kind of you know background noise. And I was just you know walking, and all you heard were I think I, I heard my own flip flops in the video as I was walking through. Um, but it was I did feel for a moment like I was the only person in the park at one point in time until. Uh, employees and management were walking by and saying welcome back and got a couple of thank yous for wearing your mask. I don't know if you two either got any of those from uh, anybody or not. I got a thank you, a lot of thank you for coming and we're happy to have you. And I was just yeah. like, I'm happy to be here. I'm so happy to be back. And they really I did. Go, go ahead, ahead Sarah. Okay. Oh, I, go ahead. I was just say, going to say too, like, how I actually missed the uh, the lost parents thing. <laughs> that one thing that annoys you the most all year long. It was like, oh, to hear that sound again. <laughs> lost parents are now meeting. <laughs> I will tell you, it is like a dream come true when you get to make one of those announcements. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. Um, I, I just, I, they had definitely had the A team out. It was really nice seeing so many returning employees, um, familiar faces that, you know, I I may not know them by name, but I've seen them year after year, even back to the time when I worked there. And it was so awesome to see everyone there. And it was just um, everyone was in it and working hard and um, just trying their best. And I saw a lot of management within like the culinary stands and in the in all the shops, just doing some hands-on training. And I love seeing that kind of stuff too. It means um, it, it just was a smooth day. 
Oh yeah, I mean, I didn't run into you know, like I said, I was waiting. I was actually waiting for the mobile ordering app to like completely crash, blow up the Wi-Fi, <laughs> crash. But I don't really think that happened. I know. I think Sarah, didn't you say you ran into like a little glitch where you thought it was down, but then it seemed to refresh and then. Re yeah, I ran into a glitch where it um, kept giving me an error that it said like um, there wasn't enough enough tax charged for it, but it turned out that it was a programming error for one item, which was the kid's meal. And once I figured that out, I was able to easily make orders and they're still learning the rhythm of, that's a whole new rhythm. So they're learning the rhythm of the mobile ordering. I love it, Pink Flamingo Cafe, that instead of where we used to have three restaurants that were connected, that instead of having that, they have um, the mobile ordering at what used to be the hot dog stand that was rarely used. Y you can just pick up all the food there. So it was one, I, ha I could order everything from one place, pick it up in one place. I had no problem picking up drinks. Sometimes they needed a reminder that I had, that I had a drink. Um, that's kind of a new thing. But I'm really hopeful that if we see the main theme park open, a similar process where we can order from all the places in the food court, maybe we can pick up from one place. That would make life easier. Oh, yeah. Like a central. Good idea. Would be great. A great idea. Because so. that's also connected kitchens. Yeah. And some of those, you know, some of those spots in the, the food court, too, it's, you know, it's kind of a little bit cramped in there. So if there is a, just a central spot where you you go pick up your order from any of the, the vendors in there, that'd be perfect. Yeah. We had a great experience. We went to Strutter's today, um, just went in, enjoyed lunch as a family on the patio. Um, it was empty. I would highly, if you're going just in for Hurricane Harbor, I would highly recommend going early and just grabbing your lunch since the harbor opens at 11. I, I'm not sure that Strutter's was open at 11 yesterday. I don't um, think it was. I don't think that it opened until 1130 or 12. But if you have a, a an early afternoon time, go in and eat with your family first at Strutter's, it's so easy. Um, there was no wait. There's indoor seating. We prefer outdoor still. There's tons of outdoor seating. There was somebody on hand, even with just my family sitting there, there was someone on hand to clean as soon as we got up. Yeah, I noticed they were really good, um, even with the, the loungers in the uh, Hurricane Harbor, in terms of wiping them down i went to put my towel down and the guy was like wait 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 let me wipe that down for you um before you put your towel down and then when i left yesterday i turned around within like 30 seconds of walking away and they were already wiping the chair down it, it's pretty impressive all of the i did not see this at, at st louis so having um experienced st louis first and then having Hurricane Harbor work, they are really taking the cleaning much more serious than I have seen, that I saw in St. Louis and I've even seen in pictures from other places to have our, I know Hank talked about a clean team. There is literally a clean team. They have vests, they have their own, um, they walk around and they are the clean team and they are on it all day. Yeah, I give them, I give them props. I mean, like you said, they were just, they were the clean team every time when I was walking around taking photos of the, every time I went past somewhere, a s spot, there was somebody from a clean team cleaning something. Yeah. And they also are, they double as um, the mask enforcement or mask reminders. They're and very, <laughs> they're very. very, very, and they're kind about it. They aren't, um, they don't, come up and yell about it, but they are kind and firm about it. I need you to put the mask on. Um, and there has been obviously some training in how to approach those situations. Even today I was in Victory Lane and I was just standing to the side of their plexiglass and the cashier just kindly asked, he said, would you mind stepping over in front of the glass? And they've really for those kind of details to be in a transaction and for the please put the mask on, there's been some training and it's really nice to hear. 
I'm all about training. I mean, basically, <laughs> I'm a trainer in real life. <laughs> so I love training and I love seeing people uh, get trained. Yeah, for, um, I know we were talking about the loungers. The one thing I do want to bring up about those is the loungers and the chairs, they are zip tied together. Okay, so they're zip tied. I've seen them in groups of two, groups of three. I think four is probably the most. Yep. Um, that were tied together. So that way, you know, your chairs are with you and you're not going to, unfortunately, you know, if you're an odd person, you need like one chair you can't borrow from somebody without taking the whole rack of three or four chairs along with you. Uh, but I think they're really kind of doing that to sort of encourage you not to move the chairs around. Because, I mean, it seemed that everything was set up to social, you know, for social distancing. Um, they just didn't want things. Moved. I mean, even we were in three different groups and we were distanced in three groups. It was nice. Um, but also we would encourage that anyone going um, try to be mindful of how many chairs you need and how many chairs you see. Sometimes it's just grab a chair. We did see um, someone near in front of us. There was a group of four chairs and one family of two took two chairs and then another family of six came and took the other chairs. It's not really how this is supposed to go down. Work. Um, so unfortunately, um, you, you have to be mindful how many are there. I will say that Skull Island was open and people all want to sit by the wave pool, but there is some excellent seating over by Skull Island, especially if you have young children. And it's not hard to go walk over to the wave pool from there. Um, so I would highly encourage you to check that out. If you, especially if you have young children, there's a nice shaded area over by Skull Island that I think people underestimate or they don't know about. Yeah, it's it just such a walk. It's a, <laughs> But I mean, if you're going to hang there anyway, it's a good, yeah, it's actually a good place. Over there. Yeah. there was, uh, you know, always, I mean, tons of seating over there. I, I don't know if it's just, you know, again, people not knowing it's there or is it very few people who just had kids that were sort of playing in that area. So that's where they took up uh, real estate. <laughs> and so we got Brent in the house. He's uh, hanging on the every word. <laughs> Hang on tight, Brent. Do not lose our words, okay? <laughs> I liked uh, yesterday how like Sarah did and our, and our group did it. We had five of us. Well, we actually had seven, but we had five. We took five chairs because not everyone needs a chair. You don't usually sit in them anyway. So we took the five, um, the three chairs that were zip tied together, and then took two of the like sit up chairs that are zip tied together and moved it within the vicinity but yet kept our back facing the social, the people behind us uh -huh. so that we weren't getting them, you know, like moving our germs on them if we didn't have our mask on. Yeah. I put it, I put it in almost, I put it perpendicular facing into my chairs. Jamie did the same thing into our loungers. And it was, I had a group of five um, and it just worked out. And I think moving for that, I don't think was a big deal just to move a couple chairs that are tethered. We kept the same area, Bob was the next person over, so. <laughs> so you had your back to him. I saw that. That was great. <laughs> yep, yep. Sarah, Sarah turned her back on me in the water park. I uh, had a great have... book to read. I didn't even open my book. <laughs> we do have a Facebook user. I'm not sure who was making this comment, but they said that it's they sat work. in the sand area when there's only three other families in there. So yeah, Plenty so of space. I know. I know. We're used to having. In the past, you were a Riptide Bay person or you were a wave pool person um there are some other seating areas where you can call your home base that aren't going to be as crowded now the park itself wasn't terribly crowded it wasn't dead and we have to think that they did remove a lot of the seating i would say that we're down to having about would you say around half the seating that we normally yeah. have I would say. And that would include in the Diamond Diamond Elite area. That was a little confusing to guess because we used to have, um, there used to be a divider between that patio and the rest of the area. And so guests came over and it was hard to see that it was a special area. Um, and that maybe needs to be labeled. It would help everyone out. But 
consider some of those other spots. There is sand seating that people maybe don't know about. It's nice and quiet um, and it's kind of fun to play in the sand and there's Skull Island seating. So it, there's plenty for everybody. It just might not all be by the wave pool. There's also a huge area back behind by the bathrooms by the wave pool. That's I kind of know. far off. Yeah. They're not far off, but you could definitely socially distance in that back area. Yeah. And that's good because even people have different comfort levels. So even though the loungers are six feet apart or close to six feet apart, I think they were, in around the wave pool, they're all being taken up. So if you are someone that you know that you want your space, um, I like that tip from Piper check out the sand area. Maybe people don't even know if you normally are someone that sits by Riptide Bay, go in a little bit because you're, you can walk anywhere. You There's room on by the wave pool where you can leave your flip flops if you don't want to burn your feet. All right. I seen Brent set this comment in, so we might as well go ahead and talk about this. Might as well tack it. We'll talk about uh, mess. So Brent's comment for uh you guys can't see it or if you're listening on the podcast um, obviously you're not seeing video he said so mask all times in the park walk around only off while walking to the pool or lazy river pretty much yes um masks are they're enforcing everywhere i mean with the exception i mean obviously one you're not going to wear it on a slide or in the lazy river or in the wave pool minus the waves um, the zero entry the body zero entry swimming pool um <laughs> that that is there um there and i think i was taken back by that a little at first because you know we were sitting in our own group of the people we all rode in the same vehicle together and we were socially distanced from everyone else i didn't think i had to have my mask on but when he came around and asked us to put our masks on we did yes they are there even if you're in your lounger they are enforcing the the mask. So unless you're actually eating or drinking, um, they are going to ask you to put your mask on. I mean, I think Jamie finished taking a bite of her lunch, and within 30 seconds, she was told to put her mask back on. She didn't get it wasn't me, but yes, it was someone <laughs> in our group. Um, and two, we were talking about, like, my daughter did not want to lay in the sun and with her mask on because she was in a lounger and then have that line across her face. <laughs> so her and another member went and laid at the edge of the wave pool so that they could be in the water without their mask and still yeah. tan at the same time. Yeah. They, I mean, there was even a group sitting behind me. They were putting on sunscreen and um, an employee came up and said, can I please ask you to put the mask on? They said, Oh, well, we'll be going to the water soon. They said, well, you need to actually be walk, walking to the water. So please put them up now. And when you walk to the water, you can pull them down. So I was really impressed with the mask enforcement. We did see a little bit of it. I'm going to be honest. Um, we saw all the management out at early in the morning or early, I guess early in the day. At around lunchtime, there was kind of a lull. And, um, and then once one o'clock hit, we were back to enforcing it very, very tightly. Yeah, like I said, I mean, I, multiple times I heard people walking around and employees saying, thank you for wearing your mask to, to various various people. Um, Jamie, I do want to ask you, um, Sarah and I, we're already used to wearing masks here in Illinois. You got to wear a mask everywhere. I mean, I'm in Chicago. It's even worse off that, than Sarah has it. How was it being in a mask at the park? It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I mean, as I live in Wisconsin, I'm actually in Milwaukee County. So we don't really, we just kind of started now where we have to wear the mask. And I, at work all day, I don't have to wear a mask. So it was different, like being in the, the heat and the sun with it on. But I wasn't, I was able to breathe just fine. And having that break of being in the water or in the lazy river, not having it on made it better. I would say that the masks at the park cells are very soft. I find them very comfortable. They're like a they're like a t-shirt material, but there's two layers and they're adjustable in the ears. Um, I think they're really soft and a good 
a good option. I had a cake oh, with me. Oh, there you yeah, go, Wonder Woman. I don't think I have one in here right now. I had a gator with me. Those are nice because you actually can. My oldest daughter had her gator, and she actually went into the pool with it. And it it's a cooling it's a cooling gator. Made it nice for her. Hello, Vita. So glad you're here. Yeah, I didn't think Rich. it was that that bad with the the mask either. I mean, this was my first time for having it on for you know several hours at a given time, but I mean, taking breaks to eat, drink, um, stop in the shade, whatnot. Um, a couple of times I was in the kind of the picnic area where everyone's eating, where you actually could have your mask off. Um, uploading some of the videos and photos that I that I took. So getting that little break made it manageable throughout the day. So, I mean, it is yeah. it is a change. It, it gets used to, but after a while, and I've seen this from multiple people, after a while, you sort of forget you have it on. Yeah. It starts to feel weird when you take, like, I, I now feel weird. I do everything in Illinois. I feel weird when I don't have it on, um, when I'm out in public. It feels odd, um, but it, it's it's not bad at all. I would, if you have a paper mask, there, that's a tough. It's tough to have that in Hurricane Harbor. They're getting wet the whole time. They do sell them at the park if something happens to your mask. They're only a dollar. Um, they do sell the face shields in the park too. True story. Um, I did see more people today wearing walking into the water park with face shields and some people face shields and masks. Um, obviously they were not going to have face shields in the water, but um, yeah, they sell the face shields. I forgot to look at the price on those. Brent with your uh, comment here, being that you're knocked down uh, drag out N95 that grab a crayon. Your challenge is to draw a picture of the food truck on that <laughs> N95 mask and definitely post the picture. <laughs> How about the ringmaster eating a quesadilla from the food truck? Oh, that's really upping the, the artistic <laughs> creativity here. Speaking of the ringmaster, he was uh, spotted in the park yesterday. Now, I actually did not physically see him. I know that you guys did, but I know he's working as a ride attendant with the slides. Is that correct? Yes, there was him and a few others. Um, that's one of the things that... I at a couple points in the spring, people were saying, I don't know how they're going to staff the park. I don't know um, how they're going to do things. I really, what I had said the whole time is there would be a lot of cross training. And there was, there's a lot of cross training, a lot of people in different roles um, that I noticed yesterday and today, and just really all hands on deck getting it done. Obviously some of the the manpower needs have switched. They've shifted away from needing so many people at the front gate because that's a well, that's a really smooth process, and we can talk about that. Um, to needing more on the cleaning side and needing more people behind in the food stand. So, and then of course needing to staff up this water park this late in the season. Um, but it was really cool to see people in different roles, including some of our favorite entertainment people. Yeah, so why don't we go ahead and good segue, you know, there. Why don't we go ahead and talk about the the entry process? So, for those of you that don't know or are kind of unfamiliar with the new process, so it's it's sort of a, I guess technically three step process to get in. Your first step is you are going to walk through an air conditioned tent, where the computer is going to get a read of your temperature. Um, I will say of all the tents that I've seen, and we have two set up since we're a larger park, some of the smaller only have one. I will say that our tent was the least air conditioned <laughs> of the ones that I've seen and seen videos of, and the shortest. Like most of the other parks have a bit of a maze to walk through just to kind of pull you off. Ours, it's just kind of a straight shot, not very long. And I think they pretty much take the temperature as soon as you walk in because we were told we were good today right when we walked in um and they so, tell you just keep walking don't yeah. stop yeah just keep going um so don't count on it cooling you down so much like in st louis you have to 
it, it's a bit of a maze and it cools you down. I've seen similar um, of Oklahoma City and from some of the others. Um, ours is a shorter walk. It, it didn't feel as cool. It definitely wasn't hot. Um, and there are two setups. So where we used to have either side of the flags, they're only using one right now. But should with that the theme park ever open, it's not just one entrance funneling people in. We would have two funneling people in. Yeah, and you, you know, like like Sarah and Jamie said, you do just you keep walking. If there's an issue, they are going to uh, stop you. And if you're kind of wondering, you know, what it looks like, if you go back and watch any of the. Um, COVID policy videos that they have out there for either, you know, when the water parks are for Six Flags, they, there's a clip on there where they're showing the other side of that scanner where you kind of see as you're walking, the temperature is popping up above your head as you're, as you're going through. Once you clear the temperature tent, then you're walking through the, the touchless scanners that are kind of. I want to interrupt because there was one step in between. Okay. There ahead. is a tent. If you don't pass, and I don't know anyone who hasn't passed, but if you don't pass, there is a, a cool off, cool down tent. And I saw there was an EMT there all day um, who is at that cool down tent to kind of monitor you. And I guess they go through different kind of procedures. So if you don't pass that, it doesn't mean you're not getting in. But that was something I did. I didn't notice it in St. Louis, but I did notice that there was a separate tent to the side um, with an EMT staffed in it. Yeah. So after, if you don't make it through, you know, Sarah said, you'll, you'll be kind I've of directed not to the not making it through. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't seen anything or heard anything either on anyone um, not making it through. I, and this is even going through the other parks. I don't recall anybody ever posting saying they got stopped. I think Kyle said that he asked. I don't know if he asked at Oklahoma City or if he, I don't know. He goes to all the parks. But he said that he had asked uh, at one point and they said two people had not made it in. They're not going to give a lot of information. They don't even let you look at the screen right. because they don't right. want to give health information out. But he said it does happen, but it wasn't a very high rate. I think more exciting than the temperature thing is the the new bags. Oh, Just walking amazing. through those scanners. <laughs> I, you know, obviously I was probably the third person going through, so I don't know how it got backlogged by the time, you know, either of you were coming in. But Not at all. It, was, it, was, it seemed that from the time that, um, I was told to enter the temperature screening to, to getting in the park was like, it seemed like 30 seconds. There was a small backlog right in the beginning. Um, but I think it was more just a confusion factor because some of the security were like, well, you need to get this bag checked. I think they were kind of still stuck in that old process. But one of the supervisors, hey, it's Kim! Oh, hey, Kim is joining us. Hello. Hello. They had her first they had, visit to Hurricane Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> they had some, well, another supervisor came along and said, no, 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 you don't need your bag check. Just keep going. So I'm sure there are certain things that alert them because they did have, you know, in the old process where you had to go to the person to look through the bag, they did have someone stationed to the side. So I'm sure if it alerted in any way, that's something somewhere that you could go. I think the biggest place where there was a backup are people who are getting new passes and pictures at, at the front. So that last part that used to be the fast part where you just scan the pass, obviously early in the season, a lot of it's people lot. are, yeah, they're processing their passes. Um, today, I did notice that guests are having a difficult time understanding that there are markers on the ground for social distancing at that step. Thankfully, when we walked in, um, we were able, they were just opening up another line. So we went right in, but this line was packed in um, probably with six different families. So um, that was the one place I didn't see a lot of extra um, eyes was in between the metal detectors and the turnstiles that probably needs some people to help remind guests because it's new to social distance because that line did not look great today. Bob's on mute. Bob's I was going to say. 
Hey! So what I was saying <laughs> is we're just saying hi to David. He <laughs> hi, David! Hi, I haven't seen you in forever! But that was kind of my silent hi being on mute there. I guess I should have just waved. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I know I kind of touched on it. If we're going kind of step by step how you get to Hurricane Harbor, they did open up quite a few um, retail and uh, culinary stands between getting into the park and getting to Hurricane Harbor. If you haven't been there or ever made that walk, because we're so we've been so spoiled with that season pass and member entrance, it's quite a haul. Yeah. Oh, it reminded <laughs> me how out of shape I am. It is. It is a haul. Um, I know we don't have real hills, but there's a, a little bit of a hill going into it. It's it's a walk. So if you haven't done that before, if you're new, if you have young kids with you and you're thinking stroller or no stroller or wagon or no wagon, I would probably think that you want the wagon and the stroller um, and know that if your kids reach a breaking point, that's also how you have to leave. So you want to think ahead um, for that walk. It is quite a walk. And we, that's going to be what the walk is for the whole season. We do see that there is there has been construction in Riptide Bay. That's not reopening. Um, but it is nice that there are places to stop. I highly recommend, again, stopping at Strutter's for your lunch before getting to the park. And then if you're looking for a snack, there were really only two snack options along with whatever's in the retail within the water park. Um, at least that's what was open yesterday um i but saw some people had pretzels and they said they were down farther by more towards skull island that that was open. oh yeah i forgot about yeah that, that was open okay it just wasn't on the mobile order but there's so many snacks in hometown square um they have today trolley treats was open and the coke stand over by wizard was open with ices hometown or the funnel cake place was open so you can still get a funnel cake um, we got two yesterday, and they pack everything's packaged to, to go yeah. containers, so it's so easy because we've always wanted to grab those and just take them home. Um, it's so much easier now. So, yeah, the fudge was really nice because then they had like a little yeah. knife in there too. Yeah, the fudge is great, um, and I think that's a faster process anyway because we used to have to wait for them to cut it. Cut it, yes. I, that's one thing I hope stays. That's so much nicer. Yeah, I noticed the the apples in there too were pre package they were on a different table um it was kind of weird seeing some i don't know merchandise or collectibles where the apples normally <laughs> are in there um i saw like dragons oh. and and some, some yeah some that was a little odd, creative odd item so sort of <laughs> like okay felt like i was in the uh one that wizard shop that's near the back uh by loggers run yeah where, where they've got like those mystical uh creatures and whatnot yeah but yes, the speaking of Trudy's, the freestyle machines are gone. They're removed. Um, if you're on our Facebook page, definitely uh, take a look. I got a couple shots of in there, and they're nowhere to be found. So it's it's not that the employees are even going to be having access to them, at least in the Hurricane Harbor area. In terms of drink options, I think it's going to be you know, just your Coke, Diet Coke. You know, raspberry tea, bright. I'm gonna shout out to Saltwater Sal's again for how great they were with drink service. They were pretty amazing. Um, and if you haven't used the app, there is an option in the app for free refills. It just straight up says free refills. Um, if you're entitled to them, they show up, and you can put in all your drinks and. There were times that Saltwater Sal's had a long line, and um, I just went right up to the side of the bar, and my drinks were ready, and I could hit. For, you do have for mobile ordering, you order, and they won't and for a time, but they won't prepare it till you get close and prepare my order. But you can order if you're in the Diamond Diamond Elite area, you can order from your seat. Um, for there. So I, I kind of felt like it was some VIP drink service. <laughs> <laughs> and I ran over to get my refills that I had ordered on the app without my mask. And they would not serve me until I came back with my mask. So that was great. And it was just totally like brain like, oh my God, I forgot to put it on. We can't take Jamie anywhere. <laughs> nope. Nope. 
Oh, Brent, no, we did not have Mancho Nacho. We did not have Chop Six yet. There were um, there were walls up, so you can't wander too far. Um, so that part of the park is not open yet. I I could go for some Macho Nacho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Brent's next question is, did we see the food truck? And I didn't see that. It. I was wondering for that too. They should put that up, but that would be knows. so nice. Park that right in um, Southwest territory. Park it there. They can even park that right in hometown. Hometown yeah. square. Oh, that, that would be so yummy. Powers <laughs> that be. Listen, we're making good suggestions. <laughs> the food truck. I, my understanding is the food there so rockford has a food trailer maybe i don't think it's a full truck um or if some somebody's gonna correct me because one time i called a food truck and they're like no it's not a food truck um they have one that does burgers and fresh fresh made chips uh, from what i'm understanding the rock that wasn't at rockford either wasn't running but they said they could smell it i thought i read yeah Maybe it was just for, maybe employees were having a picnic. <laughs> <laughs> if you were doing your mobile ordering with your drinks, you, if you want three drinks, you have, and they're all different kinds, you have to do each one for each kind too. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. It, it takes a little getting used to. I did notice some changes between now and using it before. I know some, someone had brought it up when we were doing our St. Louis, um, Q and A, but you can now customize. So when I went yeah, in, yeah, it was great. Except it, the first time, it wasn't because my order was wrong. Yeah, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I don't know that you're gonna get it with the customizations, but um, you can. There were there were some hiccups as far as packing the food, and I think it's a big kitchen, and it's gonna be a new process communicating. Um, but that option is there. It's it's pretty awesome. They'll fix it. If it's wrong, <laughs> if you get kids meals and they forget to put the chicken in. <laughs> now I'm assuming this Facebook user that sent this comment, are we talking Rockford here saying there's a food? Yeah, I think they're there. talking Rockford. Oh, okay. Yeah. Food Thank truck. you for the confirmation. Thank you, Tanya. Rockford. The food truck was there, but had chicken strips and we were told the burgers, but it wasn't on the actual menu. Oh, what was this? Is a response to Brent Flamingo Strutters and the Seaside Grill were open or whatever. <laughs> um, Saltwater Sal's did have fries, they had fish and chips on the menu. They used to have the fish tacos, those are not there, but the fish and chips were not on the dining plan. So, I See, think that's the thing. It, 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 when I tried to order it on the mobile thing, it did say it was on the dining plan. Uh huh. But my, it would not go through. See, my, yeah, mine didn't show up on the dining I, plan. I talked to the guy behind me, and he did get his on the dining, but he didn't do mobile ordering. Oh. But then he talked me out of it with his review, so I ended up having yeah. another burger. <laughs> yeah, there's that. <laughs> yeah, I just think yeah. that wasn't set up for a fish station, and they probably had made a bigger batch. And was pulling from that versus where at claim jumpers they make it fresh most of the time oh, okay yeah they well they've always had the fish tacos over there but they don't have the fish tacos anymore but often they would run out of ingredients for the fish tacos so it's probably just as well i was sad there was no root beer floats over at the oh yeah, yeah. The funnel cake stand yeah the funnel so we are gonna we are noticing some stripped down menus um we kind of we're hearing that that was going to happen just to make it easier to have fewer f food stands open. I think um, friends over in New Jersey have said the same thing that the that's kind of basic fare at each place and the menus are a little simplified. My beloved turkey burger is gone. Um, they flamingos is just one ordering, so you don't have to go to a pizza side or a or a chicken or the chicken and burger side, but there are some things that are disappearing. Oh yeah, I'm sure, you know, it is just to keep things it's a temporary. Bit it's temporary. Um, it's temporary everywhere you go though too. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah there's modified menus. There's modified menus no matter where you go. And you know, and the little hiccups with the with the mobile ordering app, I mean for us it was the very first day anybody at our park was right had any experience. So we were we were really the test guinea pigs for that. Oh, Tanya, we had funnel cakes in Gurney. We did have hometown funnel cake. What we were missing, um, normally we have the option of a root beer float. And oftentimes many of us will order it with no root beer and maybe ask mm -hmm. for <laughs> a bunch of it. Um, and sometimes we're accommodated. Um, that was not an option. It was strictly funnel cake um, or funnel cake Sunday. So Split restaurant save, save <laughs> the <laughs> restaurant families. Hashtag save the families. <laughs> I was actually relieved that I could order in one place because my son will only eat pizza and no one else ever wants pizza. So it kind of saved me. A, it really did save me a line. It was so convenient to order it all in one place. Hi, Alma. Is that the one saying hi? I was about to say. That's, we got yeah. somebody saying hi. Not sure who it is, but <laughs> Hi. <laughs> And it was really, we, we were really blessed to have Skull Island. Um, some of the other parks don't have their big um, children's area open. Ours is open, I think, maybe because it's so big. Um, I didn't. Well, Kim, Kim you went over there. What was there? You said not all of the slides were open for the kids. Rebecca said that the, like, the very top slides, I think is the yellow, or is it the orange and the purple? The very ones on the very top were not open. But the other ones were pretty much open. Nice. Yeah, and so, in Skull Island, the, the big bucket was dumping the water. Yes. I actually caught that in my one of the videos that I shot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the other one on the side, I wasn't paying attention. I was looking for the kids, and that one came dumping almost practically down on top of me. I didn't even know it was there. I'm like, oh, my God, that scared the crap out of me. And it's cold. <laughs> yeah, it's it cold so over there. Cold. <laughs> It was cold over there. They don't heat that water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one the one thing I was thinking about with them giving us Skull Island, I know how you know some of the other parks don't have kind of that kitty area, but we're we lost a huge chunk of park with the construction going on. So that's probably why we're getting Skull We lost Island. our pool. We, we don't our have pool. our waves. <laughs> that, I mean Which kind of segues with you know one of the comments that we have up what's up oh. wave pool. Oh. Yep, is, there you go. It the is zero, the zero depth zero entry, entry pool. Um it is a state of Illinois mandate that there cannot be waves in the uh, wave pool. So that's why in Illinois any of the water parks you go to you're not going to see waves anywhere. So and I'm happy to give that up if that means that the park opens. Yeah. Right. It wasn't. That I was bad. upset at first, but I was fine once I was there and I was in it. I was just so happy to be there. It's <laughs> yeah. really wonderful. We'll do a bright side. We're used to having that ten-minute rest period at the end of every hour when the wave pool is running. We do not have that anymore. It is continuous use. We did not have. I've heard that St. Louis has a queue to get into the wave pool and only a certain number of people. Um, I. I'm sure there's a capacity limit in there, but it, our wave pool is so massive. People were in, sitting in pods in the pool, enjoying it. There's so much you can easily sit in there. It's very relaxing. Um, and or it fall just, gracefully, as I did. <laughs> but it's open continuously, so you don't have to get out every oh, hour. <laughs> yes, yes, there is a wave pool. There is just no waves in the wave pool. Yeah. Which is I mean, I fine. guess you could jump up and down and make your own waves if you really We did do to. that too. <laughs> there and were people, I think there was people picking other people up and the lifeguards were whistling at them pretty quickly to get down. Yeah, I've they, seen that too. They still were very strict with safety measures. They still don't want you on the walls. Um, they want to be able to see you. But people were very, very cognizant of social distancing in the water. I think at one point Bob did take a picture, and it really was little pods of people sprinkled yeah. throughout the wave pool. Well, and by the time you guys left, towards the end of the day, the water was like bath water. You could just go right in it. It was like really warm compared to when we first got there. Um, Tuesday crowds compared to Monday. Um, just eyeing the parking lot 
the parking lots looked similar. If you're looking across it, we have a very wide parking lot. It's about three or four rows of cars. Um, the uh, We would estimate that there were, on Monday, probably no more than 500 people. Um, <laughs> <chunky stuff. laughs> That's a Bob question. <laughs> um, Tuesday looked... Tuesday looked similar. Maybe it had one fewer row of cars. Um, it, it's a constant flow of people in, and there is a f constant flow of people out. It's very, it's a very comfortable number. I will be interested to see what the weekend looks like. I may not go on Saturday and just kind of watch from afar, but <laughs> um, I'll try it Sunday. So, with the off-topic question, how do you get an official junkie sticker for your truck? Um, we don't actually have stickers. Gonna I would have, say that's that's probably have, Rich asking for the semi. Who knows? We have we, can, <laughs> we have magnets <laughs> and we have coasters, and we give them away from time to time with our various live streams. Um, we're not doing one today where we're giving away prize packs, but um, we usually give them away. Um, oh, I have a pin for next time. I don't oh, have it okay. in here now. I'll do a pin. They did get new pins in the stores, so I was super excited. Um, if you're a oh, fan of... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't happens, even think of looking not, at pins. Do not do not go into Brent's pod <laughs> while in the, uh, the, the pool. Um, okay, I don't want to know why it's going to be a little bit warmer. Victory Lane, <laughs> if you're looking for pins, speaking of, um, if you're looking for pins, go into Victory Lane. The new pins, um, I know we got those massive pins last year. They're still up in flags. They're smaller. And there's one for Demon with a movable um, coaster. And there's one for Viper. And they also have those five packs with the carousel that kept went in and out of stock last year so they are really well um stocked and then there's a nice rainbow with six flags great america i've now picked that up for st louis and for um great america and my daughter's the one who found the great escape lake george shirt today and she was oh, yeah. very excited <laughs> to she loves her shirts from all the different six flags and that's not one that we really well we might get to at some point, but it's not currently open. So she's like, I got a Lake George shirt before people at Lake George got one. So. <laughs> what do you guys think on Brent's uh, um, Was it been, was the diamond seating beneficial or is it unnecessary? Unnecessary. Unnecessary at this point. Um, it, it really, yeah, there's not that much of it. Um, if you get there at a reasonable time, there's plenty of seating. And again, if there's nothing by the wave pool, go to Skull Island. There's probably a ton. Um, I noticed like where they have like the sand behind where we were, there's nothing but like weeds coming up. It didn't even look like attractive. I don't know what that looks like at a normal time. Um, well, I think I think that's one thing where if we think about it, they normally have regular landscaping and they haven't had it for months. So that's going to probably take a long time to catch up on. <laughs> um, I know it. Um, so do they, they have, have cabana? cabana? Yes. Cabanas are available. Um, they had, I don't think, well. Only uh, the queen ones. Uh, the king not, because the king are right behind the wave pool. Did we look? Yeah, they were all okay. stripped down. I noticed that when I was going through the lazy river. So it's only, what are the, like six, seven or eight? Queens. Queen, Queen Cabanas. I think they're really in a better spot anyway. So you can have up to six people in there and then those little um, two person lounge uh, chair. And for those who are, you who are Diamond Elite, those points are racking up really fast for those triple points. <laughs> I know I uh, have enough for a cabana again already. Party so with Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I, I, I did do a lot of all shopping. The junkie, all the junkies are invited. All <laughs> That's a lot. I was going to say, all of our mods are invited. We can all sit in there and they can come up and see everybody. <laughs> I told Bob one time I did rent five or six cabanas. <laughs> I, I've done it before. Um, Jeez. This one's <laughs> full of questions, isn't he? Oh no! He, he thought he was watching a Disney stream. Yes, we we are going to be talking about the removal of um, Splash, Splash Mountain, Mountain. <laughs> with the 
Princess and the Frog overlay. That'll be our next topic. Of the None of us. Here. Um, <laughs> Ashley's asking, were any of us at Rockford? None of us were there yet. It's a bit of a haul yeah. for all of us. Um, I thinking I may go next week or maybe if I feel like it this week, it's still for me, it's almost an hour and a half. Um, I enjoy Rockford. Um, and I'm really thankful that we've had some reports from some other um, junkies, but I just didn't make it out. I, when, when I'm going to make a choice between where I'm going to go opening day, my heart's always going to be <laughs> Flags Great America. It's always going to be in the Gurney Park, but I will make it out to Rockford sometime in the next couple of weeks. I know Rich will probably be going by tomorrow. Maybe he can see what the crowd's like or what it even looks like. Yeah. But it might be in the morning. I don't know. I have to, I'll just stop the truck we'll and just see. go in there for like an hour. <laughs> Take pictures and video for us. If he's Rebecca's trying egg, to get in. The, the eggs will eventually get there. It's yeah. <laughs> They're just going to Walmart. It's okay. <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's It's fine. Yeah, we all come from, uh, none of us live that far out west. We could at least all carpool in the semi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so With the eggs? Yeah. <laughs> Food fight! <laughs> yeah. I'd have some really shiny hair. It's air, it's air conditioned. <laughs> nice. So, Kim, I'm going to ask you before I, I forget. What was your first? What was your impression of Hurricane Harbor? I know it was your very first time ever being in the water park. What'd you think? I mean, it was. It's neat. It's just kind of. It seems like almost like the Dallas type thing. I mean, it was really. It was. It's really different. I mean, we didn't go. I didn't go on any slides or anything. I don't know how long those hikes are to get up those stairs. I wouldn't be able to do it. But I mean, it was. I mean, it was clean. Of course, what was really hot was when you're walking across where the lazy river is. And you don't have shoes on, you better make a track very fast because your feet are going to be burning because it was very um, hot. My kids recommend walking along the edge of the zero entry <laughs> <non -label. laughs> before um, you get there <laughs> as long as you can. Um, and then getting to the lazy river, kind of going around that way. If I don't know if that was still open, if that, but that's it was. The way, that's the way they do it rather than going on the bridge, they kind of sneak around. Um, the opposite way going down the whole length of the wave pool just to keep their feet from getting burned. I was trying to get, I, I mean, we'll try to go again because of course it's open now. I mean, I know my daughter is talking about going next week sometime with her friends and we'll see what she thinks of it too. She's going and then I want to try to take her before she leaves for college. So we'll see what happens. But otherwise, I mean, it was good. I just thought it was kind of weird with that what that one spot where it's supposed to be, I think, sand, where you're <laughs> supposed to be able to sit in sand. It was like weeds coming up. That was like kind of like the kind of like, uh, really? <laughs> but otherwise, I mean, it was fine. Water shoes. I think Rebecca, I see the comment about water she keeps shoes. <laughs> okay. It's awesome, but I think you then have them in the lazy river it's i guess yeah. i guess i have seen people leave them out so i will take that back because the lazy river it's are you getting it's one entry one entrance one exit yes, yes. okay so there is an alternate exit but it used to be you could open. only have blue tubes exit that way no nope. and now they no, only no. have clear tubes no blue tubes there's no tube rectal no tube. i think that's yep. a good update there's don't go buy a tube pass. There's no tube rental. They're not in the, in the zero entry non-wave pool. They're, you can't bring them in. They used to be kind of like a fast pass for the lazy river. There are no blue tubes. They're not even blown up for you. Um, but it's the same um, entrance and same exit for the lazy river. So I have seen people leave their shoes um, at the exit of the lazy river. So I guess you could do that. I did do that yesterday. Would I normally wear like a pair of uh, Velcro sandals that are super old because the the wave pool does is pretty rough on the bottom, mm -hmm. but I could not find them, so I had bare feet all day yesterday. One lap river rule. Yep. Yeah. Was there? Okay. Yes. Yep. One lap, just because they're. Um, I think they were trying to time how they sent the tubes out and limit how many tubes, just because that's the hardest place to social distance. You're tube goes where it wants to go um but it is one lap so there's no getting around it like you used to i used to buy the tube rental just so we would 
have not ever have to wait in line for lazy river but and you do um, have the next question is do you have to use tubes in it yeah you do yeah. i'm pretty sure have to use tubes yeah i was yeah, gonna go on to and stay in that tube yeah. yeah if you get outside of it there was a guy who got yelled at twice when we were going through the first time i was gonna go the second time but then richie had his big huge dilemma but <laughs> Vita, did they allow water shoes? I don't know. It's a good I don't question. see why they wouldn't. I mean, I didn't notice anybody with them on, but I don't they, really look at people's feet either. <laughs> I'm sure they do, or neoprene socks. I'm sure they do. They sell water shoes in that little shop in, um, in Hurricane Harbor. They were well stocked with towels and water shoes. and But no they, masks in that that's store. That's what I was just no going to say. Jamie read my mind on that one. Face shields and, and disposable masks, um, but they said that they didn't get masks. That could change, but they do have little hand sanitizer things that you can buy. Those little red things; those are hand sanitizers. They're like a credit card. I thought they were so cute, and I tried to buy one, but the SKU wasn't programmed in yet, so they couldn't. Then it's sell free. Them. <laughs> um, it's free if it doesn't scan. <laughs> I don't know if I want to say. Let me just tell you. Uh, yesterday, my That's daughter got cheese and got like four thousand points. Um, <laughs> we don't even know how that happened, but there and there's different colors in different stores. So like there was red at the water park, but then I saw orange. I've seen green. At di it's there, it's kind of cool. It's a little credit card that just snaps. But you don't. You cannot walk fifteen feet in the park without being within arm's reach of hand sanitizer. It's all yeah. over. You don't need to buy it. It is all and over. And I, I did notice, too, that I thought I saw people, or I saw the clean team actually spraying <laughs> and cleaning the bottles and there was a pump where you put your hand down and pump. So I thought that was great, too, because everyone's touching the top of that pump, and they're still cleaning that off. Awesome. They have Six Flags Great America 2020. There are new... The t-shirts are new. Um, I don't think I saw any dated. And that could very well be that that's a decision that was made this year to not have any that are dated or we are opening so late. But there are a lot of really fun new designs. Um, I, we, I wanted to stop. We stopped at Victory Lane on the way out. And then we, my intent was to stop at the carousel store right in front. Flags, but they yeah. were closed right away at six o'clock. So, oh yeah, yeah. We have and we have to remember that they're pretty much running one shift right now. So things are, be mindful. Things are going to close right away. Somebody's been there almost the whole day, or the whole day. It's just, um. But I didn't see dated merchandise, but I did see a lot of new stuff, a lot of fun stuff, a lot of crop tops. So Brent, if you're looking for a crop top. <laughs> They got you covered. <laughs> <laughs> now I know, I know that we, you know, touched on the fact that the hand sanitizer stations were everywhere. Did you guys see any hand washing stations at all? I didn't. Um, I'm oh wait, no, I think I saw one or two, but they weren't like. Um, what do you want to say? They weren't like a hand built. They were like those big gray ones you would see at like church festivals. Yeah, that's it was what they are. leaving. Leaving Hurricane Harbor, I saw one. So I think it's like right at the entrance way. Okay. I seen one. When Jamie yeah. was taking her pictures of the new ride being built, the construction ones, I spun around and saw one sit, sitting there. Okay. Since I'm tall enough. <laughs> yeah, we established that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see a ton at St. Louis either, but they were really easy to see. They were in like areas that would have a lot of people. Now, the one thing that I think we all missed, or I don't even think there was a spot, but I didn't see a mass free zone. Mm, I did not either. No. I don't think we actually have. I, I don't. It's just kind of the out. I'm assuming they're just sort of using that kind of the picnic tables across from the restaurant as sort of the I mass free zone. I think that was like a smoking area, too. Like right where we were behind there, there was a smoking area right there. So. I don't know if those were the picnic tables you're talking about. Now, the ones I was referring to were the ones that were down by the main, like the, the pizza restaurant. Um, by the, across from the Flamingo. Yeah, it's across from Flamingo. Pink Flamingo. Where we had dinners, Kim. Yeah. 
Thanks, Brent. Thanks for joining us. I don't know if you brought if you guys brought it up before. Um, I can't remember what I was gonna say. I know that like there are some workers there too. I did get some pictures. I did send some to the person. And oh. he's like, just stop and say hi, but you don't really want to take up a lot of their time either. If they're in a safety, so I know Dan had posted in our group that he's happy if you say hi. If somebody's in a safety sensitive situation, probably say hi as you go down the slide and yeah. be mindful of that because that really is a, an important. So the, uh, that last email, that pertains to Six Flags St. Louis. They're the only ones that I think so far have came out and said any of their benches are in mass free zone. I know our park, I haven't seen anything. No. I think that was specific to St. Louis because I don't think that's even been going on in Texas either. No, I don't think Texas, I don't think New Jersey, New Jersey would, we would, our friends at New Jersey would have said if that was in their I, I've asked. I haven't seen it discussed there and they've had a higher, I, the reason I don't think it will happen is we're going to have a higher capacity just as New Jersey sure. has. Um, it, it, it's hard. Did you guys talk about the um, the crew that I know, Jamie? We were kind of talking about it earlier about what, like the the crew that was walking back and forth cleaning stuff. Oh, the clean, at, team. The clean team! Yeah, at first they were yeah. like, "Put your mask on, put your mask on, put your mask on," and then after you guys left, then it kind of like more people were coming in and kind of rotating. There was a lady sitting there reading a book. There was some people just sitting there, and they didn't say nothing to them about their mask at all. So I don't Hi, know Alma. if it matters on the people either who are working in that section because it was one guy who kind of just kept going after people. We uh, are live. Yeah, so. We are we are live right now. <laughs> We've been live for the past one hour, two minutes, and it's like 11 seconds. <laughs> I don't know how much longer we'll be alive, but Not, we are live. Yeah, I know later in the afternoon. Later in the afternoon, it was actually the uh, security that had stopped and reminded me to put okay. my mask on versus the clean team. You were yeah. just breaking rules left and right, Jamie. Come on. Sorry. <laughs> and my Wisconsinite, it's a thing, something to get used to. Yeah, something we'll, new. We'll, we'll let we'll let that we'll let that slide. We'll chalk it up to being a Wisconsinite. Chalk it up to being a Packer fan. <laughs> Where you went there, not. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Packer fan, Brewer fan. Yes. So I mean, is there anything that we missed talking about? I mean, we'll take it. We'll field a couple more questions if anyone has any. Um, member services is open. Um, you can pick up your cups. They aren't, I, I guess we didn't say they aren't refilling. They, in and, oh, and they do have those new insulated ones. I, I wasn't yeah, intending I to buy one too. and I never did. They're, yeah, they're in member services. Um, you What you do is you um, exchange your member plastic. Cup. Your plastic member cup, I don't even know if they're taking it in in, in this time anyway. I, I don't know. Yeah, they um, are. Um, okay. they just another junkie, like, someone had told me about it. Yeah, to, norm, you can buy one outright for $50 or um, you can um, exchange yours for 20 and get the cup for $20. And this is kind of exciting because it's one of those things that we saw in a survey last year and it showed up. So... They were by the flamingo place where the pizza were. They were kind of hidden behind everything. I saw it from another angle that well, they were back two there. Cups. There's an orange 2020 cup, and then there's a red member. Yeah, I'm so, talking about the one that you guys are oh, talking yeah. about. The the metal one is yeah. over there. But they even have some over the there metal, too. There's two. Okay. So I think members have to go to. I didn't. I, members might have to get theirs from member services, but I'm excited to see what that would do to keep things nice and cool my dilemma is i love those koozies to help decorate <laughs> my cup there and are some adorable koozies in the shop right now yes there are some new ones there's some new ones for pride there was a really cool one i was gonna buy yesterday it had a skull on it and i was thinking fright fest right away and oh i know the skull with the rose there's a shark yes. the one there's <laughs> a football and a baseball a lot of great merch and I spent a lot of money, I think, 
probably helped the bottom line <laughs> in the last two days. <laughs> I spent $38 on masks even at 50% off. So it was oh, all about support. Christina says that we actually have to buy them. So we're, we have to buy them from guest services at the front of the park, not okay. at member services. Thank you for that. So I'm assuming maybe she bought one. That's kind of cool. I'm not sure and, who's saying hi to me, but uh, someone uh, said I know. hi to me and Jamie. Christina. Hi, Christina. Ah! Oh, hi, thanks, Christina. For... <laughs> Nobody else, say. <laughs> Nobody else, just the two of us. <laughs> uh, let's see. I know some, I saw something about wrote... points. Points, yes. Yeah, so they fix points. Um, it appears that there it is. you're supposed to get triple points. You're getting your triple. Points. Yeah, and they're not showing up like they used to. So in the past, when we've had like double points days or triple points days, you get your regular points. And then within a week, you get like these magic points that show up. You earned extra points. They are calculated as triple points. So when I walk into a I, I posted a picture this morning on Junkies. When I walked in the park yesterday, this today I had 150 points for visiting the park instead of 50. When I made a purchase in the store, it automatically calculates at 75 points per dollar. So they are showing up. Um, they are calculating differently. A accurately. It's, it's easier because they're all happening at once. So they're just calculating 75 points per dollar and 150 points for entering your home park. If you happen to go to a far away park, you're going to get 300 points just for walking in and check into your rides. Those are nice. Hey, I said now. something interesting. Huh. I guess you can say something interesting. <laughs> Yes, okay. Vita, you're right. Vita, I like to lose my cups. I put them down and I like <laughs> to leave them there. I like to leave mine in my car and make some kind of interesting beverage kimchi with them. Um, and so this is great that I only need to bring one with me now. <laughs> yeah. I never put anything in it. <laughs> oh, friends. <laughs> All right. I don't think we have. Bob, you're muted again. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there we go. We'll fix that. Um, no, I don't really have anything else, but Sarah, Kim, Jamie. Oh, anything today there was a huge problem inside the park. Hmm. That's all they're giving us? Okay. What well, was the huge problem? <laughs> I wish we could have her come on. <laughs> time. Come on live. Yeah. I didn't go into Hurricane Harbor today. I just I went I yeah, had a, I'm not, a peaceful I lunch and went shopping. And I'm not going tomorrow, so I don't know. I mean I, I don't really see anything on our page either about, you know, from anyone there. So I don't know, you know, obviously people are just getting home now if they were and i don't know if it was a huge problem like one incident or if it's a huge problem with a policy right or wi-fi went out or mobile order one thing that i know that people didn't get a chance to i oh. don't really deal with it very much was when richie got stung by the bee it kind of went pretty like it seemed like it was taking forever for them to kind of get there there was a secure like a lifeguard manager i think it was who came and she had us move and then eventually the first aid person came. They sprayed the bee's nest pretty quickly. It was right when you were going into Lazy River. He yeah. happened to just touch right where, like you couldn't tell like there was bees there. Because no. as soon as he got done touching it and they all went back in there, you couldn't tell that it was right there. Uh, so they sprayed they it, came they came back and nowhere. sprayed it. Yeah. So Christina said that there were some problems on the cash register at Frozy account. I did notice in two places yesterday because I use Apple Pay um, for everything. And I'm hoping it wasn't your credit card account because that can be a pain. But um, there were, it's the first time with some of these registers working for a while. And there, I ran into two registers where Apple Pay wasn't working and it completely crashed the register um and i was worried about that happening with mine because i have a limit for how many times i can use apple pay per day and 
it was adding up on scans of my card. So I don't know if it was it froze your meal account or froze your credit card account, but that's really sad to hear. I hope that they are working on those IT issues. And again, it's the first week, so there's bound to be some hiccups. Some of the employees at F food service don't know how to run the register. Double, triple scanning the card and freezing the account. I hope you got a refund for anything you were overcharged. I um, have been watching and I, I know that the park is really good about that when these things happen and um, that's the time to maybe ask for a uh, supervisor to come help with some training. I'm very sorry that happened. I noticed that there was a lot of people from Jamaica there too. So we do have that might have workers. that might have a little bit of a dilemma too with what you know have going on. Craig asks, so am I able to unpause my membership? We have <laughs> <laughs> we are very sorry to hear that the game changed with pausing. It's it's a good thing for some people. It's one less step. Um but as of now it's not there. We tend to see some updates on Mondays, so we will check again. We'll keep checking. We've been told that they are working on a process to unpause. They were working on a process to uh, cancel reservations for how long did that take? That didn't take as long as mobile ordering. That eventually happened. So as soon as we know, we'll we'll let you. We'll let you know. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure, especially on when members are unable to pause. I'm sure I'll probably. Uh get notification yeah on that from, uh, we we partner not only yeah not only do we we're very happy to have a network um of people within our own park um very and and lots of really great communication from the park whenever we have questions they're great about answering um we also partner with we we have quite a network of groups such as ours for other Six Flags parks. So we all share information. Um, and so between all of that, we'll know soon. And I'm just, we'll on. finish off on this. No, there's really no clue on the uh, theme park opening. I know some rides were cycling today. Um, you don't want to read too much into that. No, nope. and I think we could go by what Hank said in the interview with Marcus is they knew that they needed an, a month to get up and they're going to get everything ready to go. So as soon as um, anything changes in Illinois, as far as when theme parks can open, they'll be ready. Yeah, as of, you know, the email I had from the park uh, what was it, last week, they're still waiting on clearance and guidance from the state. So yeah. It's it's still going to be probably <laughs> at least a couple more weeks before we see anything from announcement with the park. You'll know when we know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, uh, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, Sarah, Kim, Jamie, for uh, joining me. It's fun, as always. Um, until next time, you guys have a... Uh, Good evening. Thanks for tuning in. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.